Welcome back to Newton's Laws of Motion, The Adventures of Jonathan. This time we're going to do friction problems involving inclined planes. Let's look at this problem. A trained sea lion slides from rest with constant acceleration down a 3 meter long ramp into a pool of water. If the ramp is inclined at an angle of 23 degrees above the horizontal and the coefficient of kinetic friction between the sea lion and the ramp is 0.26, how long does it take for the sea lion to make a splash into the pool? Okay, so when doing this problem, first thing we want to do is we want to draw a uh, free body diagram. So we have this, we have this at an angle of 23 degrees. I'm going to turn the sea line into a box. And then we have a force of gravity, force normal, and then force of friction. Okay. What I'm going to do after this is once I draw the free body diagram, I'm going to draw on a flat surface because it just makes things a lot more simple. So now I have force of gravity. I'm going to tilt everything the other way. So this is going to be force of gravity is going to look something like this. And I guess we don't know what the mass of the sea lion is. So I'm just going to do math times 10. This one, this is a harder problem. Force normal is going to be perpendicular. So this is going to be force normal and the force of friction opposing the motion. Okay. All right. So a few things to know when we're doing this is the angle between there, this angle here is going to be the same as that angle right there. So this is going to be 23 degrees. Okay. Um, so we know that this is also three meters long. So this is three meters. So I'm just going to make this three meters long. Okay. Um, a few things we know. So let's see. Um, I guess I'll do it in purple. Initial velocity equals zero. Displacement is equal to three meters. And I guess that's all we know. We're looking for the time. Okay. Uh, so what we should know is, okay, we need to find ex we need to find three pieces of information. We need to find acceleration first. So the only acceleration that we're gonna worry about is uh, everything that's happening in this x direction. So let's just kind of label things. So this force of gravity in the y is going to equal mass times 10 times cosine of 23. And this force of gravity in the x is going to equal mass times 10 times sine of 23. And we know this normal force is going to be the same as this force of gravity in the y direction. So this is going to be mass times 10 times cosine of 23. And we know force of friction kinetic, so I know this is a lot, is, gonna, is the same as the normal force, which is mass times 10 times cosine of 23 times the coefficient of kinetic friction, which is 0.26. Okay, so now we have all that. Let's try to find what the acceleration is at the x direction. It looks like we don't have a lot of information, so it looks a little complicated, but it'll, it'll all work out. Sum of all forces in the x is equal to mass times acceleration in the x. We have two forces in the x. We have force of gravity in the x pulling down the sea line, and we have the force of friction trying to prevent it from moving. So let's just kind of write all this out. Force of gravity in the x is mass times 10 times sine of 23 minus force of friction, which is mass times 10 times cosine of 23 times 0.26 is equal to the mass times acceleration which we're looking for. Important to know is mass is in every part of this equation. So what that means is we could divide both sides by mass and that cancels out. Once we have that canceled out, we could just find what acceleration is by plugging it into our calculators. And let's see, 10, oops, 10 times sine of 23 minus 10 times cosine of 23 times 0.26 uh, 
Um, that's going to give us 1.51 meters per second squared. Okay, so 1.51 meters per second squared. Once we know that, we're going to look over here. Acceleration is equal to 1.51 meters per second squared. Now we look at our formula sheet, and we see that this formula here has all the variables. So we're going to do displacement of x equals initial velocity t plus 1 half a t squared. Displacement is 3, initial velocity 0, plus 1 half, 1.51 t squared. Do a little bit of trade, I mean algebra, 3 times 3 divided by 0.5, uh, divided by 1.51, and then the square root of that, and we get 1.99 seconds. Okay, so a lot going on, but what you want to start out with is just rearranging this free body diagram and then putting in all the answers for each of these components. Once you do that, just kind of, if you organize everything, you should be able to get from step to step. It is a harder problem though, so, but start with organizing all of your data and everything you know. All right, let's try something similar. A child goes down a playground slide with an acceleration of 1.05 meters per second squared. Find the coefficient of kinetic friction between the child and the slide if the angle of the slide is 35 degrees below the horizontal. So again, let's look at this. What we have, we have this angle here. It's a 35 degree incline. We have this child who I made into a box. Force of gravity, force normal, and force of friction kinetic. Let's change it to a flat plane. And then we have force of gravity going this way. We don't know what the mass of the child is. So I'm just going to mass times 10. Force normal. And then force of friction kinetic. Again, the angle in between right here is the same as that. So that's going to be 35 degrees. The force of gravity in the y is going to be equal to this force of gravity, mass times 10, times cosine of 35. Force of gravity in the x is going to equal mass times 10, times sine of 35. And this force normal is going to be the same as this force of gravity in the y. They have to cancel out because it's not moving in the y direction. So mass times 10 times cosine of 35. And then we know for the force of friction, it's the force normal, mass times 10, cosine of 35, times the coefficient of friction, oh, I guess that which we do not know. Okay. Now we're trying to find what the acceleration is. Oh, uh, actually no, we have the acceleration. We're trying to find this coefficient of friction. So let's look at everything in the x direction. Sum of all forces in the x equals mass times acceleration x. What we have is we have this force of gravity in the x minus this force of friction in the x is equal to mass times acceleration x. Force of gravity in the x is mass times 10 times sine of 35 minus force of friction, which is mass times 10 times cosine of 35 times coefficient of friction, which is going to be equal to mass times acceleration, which is 1.05. Again, we notice the mass is in every part of this equation, so it cancels out. And now we're just isolating to find this right here. Uh, I guess we can simplify things. Let's do 10 times sine of 35. We get 5.74 minus 10 times cosine of 35, and we get 8.19, so this is going to be 8.19 times mu k is equal to 1.05. Going to bring this over to the other side, 1.05 minus 5.74 divided by 8.19, and we get 0.57, the coefficient of friction. Uh, kinetic friction is going to be 0 0.57. Okay, let's do one more of these kind of more advanced problems. Well, and then we'll do a conceptual problem. You drag a crate with a rope that has a mass of 10 kilograms across the floor at an angle of 40 degrees. 
40 degrees. You pull on the rope with the force of 45 newtons. If the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.21, what is the normal force, the magnitude of the force of friction, the acceleration of the crate? So let me kind of just draw out everything that's happening here. We have force of gravity, which is mass times uh, gravity. So this is going to be mass times 10. So this is going to be 100 newtons. We have force applied which is going to be equal to 45 newtons and um, we know the angle is going to be 40 degrees let me just draw this out so this is going to be 40 degrees we have the normal force and then the force of friction kinetic because it's moving okay so what you want to do whenever you have components like this is you want to find what these components are. So this is going to be 45 times cosine of 40, which is going to give us 45 times cosine of 40, 34.47. So I'm just going to put that here, 34.47 newtons. And then over here, this is going to be 45 times, let me just kind of erase this, 45 times sine of 40 should give us a similar answer. 45 times sine of 40, which is going to be 28.93 newtons. Okay, now that we've gotten everything that we kind of know, uh, we can figure out the other things. So what's the normal force? So the normal force is in the y direction. So let's look at everything in the y direction. Um, okay, sum of all forces in the y is equal to mass times acceleration in the y. And we have three forces in the Y. We have normal force in the Y, force of gravity in the Y, and the force applied in the Y. Force normal is up, so it's positive. Force applied in the Y is positive, so that's uh, going up. And then uh, force of gravity is negative because it's going down. Force normal, we don't know what that value is. That's what we're looking for. Force applied in the Y is 28.93. Force of gravity is 100. Mass is 10. And we know the acceleration of y is going to be zero because it's not moving. Again, it's not moving, so acceleration of y is zero. So force normal is going to be, we bring everything to the other side, 100 minus 28.93, which is going to equal 71.07 newtons. Okay. Uh, so now we can fill this in, 71.07 newtons. Part B is, what is the magnitude of the force of friction? So the force of friction, we know, is going to be equal to the coefficient of friction times the normal force. Coefficient of friction, which is 0.21. Normal force, which we just found, 71.07 times 0.21. And we get 14.92. 14.92 newtons. The last one is what is the acceleration of the crate? So we know this crate is going to be accelerating in the x direction. It's not moving in the y direction. It's going to be only accelerating in the x direction. So let's find that. Sum of all forces in the x equals mass times acceleration in the x. And we have two forces in the x. We have the force applied in the x that's going to the right and force of friction that's going to the left equals mass times acceleration. Force of applying the x is equal to 34.47. Force of friction, which we learned is 14.92. The mass is 10. And now we can find what the acceleration is. Okay, let's see. 34.47 minus 14.92 divided by 10. And we get 1.95 meters per second squared. All right, let's do one last problem on this section. As shown below, a boy pushes a sled of mass m across a rough horizontal surface by applying a force of magnitude f directed at an angle theta. The coefficient of kinetic friction between the sled and the surface is mu k. The normal force on the sled is blank. So let's draw a free body diagram of this. Force of gravity. Force normal, force applied, and force of friction. So the normal force 
is going to be, uh, if we, okay, let's look at everything in the y direction. Sum of all forces in the y, mass times acceleration in the y. We have force normal, which we're looking for, minus force of gravity, that's going down, and we have this force applied in the y direction. So I'm going to do minus force applied uh, times sine of, uh, sine of theta. So this is theta right here. And this is going to equal zero because the acceleration is zero because it's not moving the y direction. So we can say that the normal force is going to be equal to both of these combined. Force of gravity, which is mg, plus the force applied times sine of theta. And we get that this is going to be the answer of uh, d of d, d mg plus f sine theta. All right, thanks for watching.